Hello and welcome back to the feature. It's been a little while since we've done a video and we're excited to come back with the brand new Marvel film to hit the theaters. You know exactly what this is. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is the much anticipated sequel to one of my personal favorite Marvel films and probably one of my favorite films period. Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that everyone was surprised when that movie came out that it was so successful and I think that it's just garnered so much support as it's come to yep. video and people have gotten the word of mouth and heard about this this movie and how fun the first one was. And I think it's pretty obvious now looking at the numbers it's up to 145 million here in its opening weekend. Big successful movie. John, what did you think of Volume 2? You know, I really, I really enjoyed Volume Two. Uh, it's great. It's just, it's so much, it's so much fun. It's everything that you would expect coming back into this. Mm. And they just build on these characters that we fell in love with in the first film, and it, it, it's just a blast. It's yeah. just a blast, total blast. And you know, you, you mentioned the big thing, and I think that this is the thing that the movie does so well is characters. And you know, I think that's for me the big thing that's the draw of the Guardians of the yep. Galaxy is that. I, I, I think I've told you before, it's a comfort food movie for me. Like, you had a bad day, watch Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And you know, you feel a little down, the Guardians of the Galaxy. They just, it just cheers you up. It's like big scoops of ice cream, but cinema. And, uh, you know, characters like Star-Lord and Rocket, Gamora, Drax, Groot. Groot. Yeah, yeah the, these characters are just so fun to be around that it's just great just, <laughs> you know, sharing the space with them for yeah. a couple hours. They're, they're, it's just the, the com. There's so much good comedy uh, in both of these movies, and then just the, the visual effects too. You know, we we're talking. I, I you asked me what I thought of the movie because we watched it separately. It's just one of the most unique movies ever made. Uh, both mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Two. These are these are one of a kind. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing else that exists out there that are like this. Nothing. Yeah. How many movies like is part of the plot that? One of the characters has to meet his dad, who is a living planet? It's like, what? Is there another yeah. movie? Tell me in the comments. <laughs> so he tells me there won't be a comment about it. But yeah, this was, I think, a really satisfying uh, follow-up. And it really, like I said earlier, it really struck the characters. And it really tried to get the characters right and bring them to new places. And I think that's yeah. the big thing. Is this movie wasn't a retread. They went to all new places with these characters, and the story is all different. Yeah, yeah, all the things, and, and like the, and the addition of new characters too, like Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell was fantastic in this movie. He's just, I, I love Kurt Russell. He's I, one, I love, he's one of my Kurt favorite Russell. actors. Say, say fucking Pliskin. <laughs> say fucking Pliskin. <laughs> <Blisket. laughs> just seeing him come into this universe, it was, it was, it was so much fun. He's just. He just has so much charisma. Exactly. And he's the perfect yeah. character to play Chris Pratt's dad. Yeah. Um, I heard some people saying that, like, Kurt Russell really in his time was kind of the Chris Pratt of, like, Yeah, the I think Rob Rath Pratt said that. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, yeah. I really did uh, kind of agree with that sentiment. To like, yeah, totally. Uh, Chris Pratt is such a great movie star. You know, he has got this charisma that I'm, I don't... I don't think I know another actor in recent memory that has that. that has that natural charisma like that, where you would just want to spend time with him and hang out with him and just sort of share the space with him. And these movies, like I said, that's, I think that's why they're great, just kind of comfort food in that way. It's just he just knows how to cheer you up and make you laugh, and you just you feel for the guy. I think everybody feels like they could be Star-Lord. Like, not everybody could be Tony Stark, you know, when you're watching the Avengers. Yeah. It's an otherworldly thing, okay? If you guys think you're as smart as Tony Stark, you're probably not. <laughs> but I think or everybody <laughs> could kind of be, be Star-Lord. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what's so fun, I think, as far as all the Marvel movies go. Well, I, I could be Star-Lord, right? I mean, I, I could be Star-Lord, too. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, it, it just the, all, the, all the additions to the characters. And I love that they did with... Uh, uh, Yandu's character too. Yeah. Uh, Yandu's story arc, you know, his character arc is so is really fleshed out, and you get to learn a lot more from you know the past and and what really went on between him and Peter Quill. Yeah. Uh, he, growing up, it, it, his character just the arc for his character was was it was done so well. He gets to chew the scenery with kind of everybody in this movie in some really awesome yeah. ways, and I think that his character 
is a big part of this movie, and I, I don't think I was expecting that. Like, I was excited that Yondu was going to be part of the Guardians proper when I was seeing the yeah. trailers and all the promotional material and stuff. I was like, awesome, you know, Yondu in the comics, he's an original Guardian. I thought he was so cool in the first one, and he really was kind of unofficially part of the Guardians in that yeah. one. He helped them in the end game, uh, and I think that it was so cool to see him really come into the fold and Michael Rooker, I thought, knocked this movie out of the park. I think that his arc on The Walking Dead is Merle is some of the best yep. stuff yeah, yeah, on totally. that show. I don't even really like that show anymore, but I will easily admit that Michael Rooker is fantastic in that. I think that he brought that kind of gravitas and that uh, just, I mean, he just brought that character to life and really fleshed him out in some awesome ways where he was a full person here in this movie. Some good humor there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, and, we'll wait for the spoiler with all the characters, really, yep. and I think that's what's so good is that he really plays so well with all of them and has these great moments with Rocket, with Star Lord, with Groot, and uh, I think like the addition to like Mora's character too, uh, with uh, the yeah. the story with her and her sister Nebula. Mm -hmm. I thought they did a really good job of kind of understanding a little bit more uh, between these two characters. I do and, like, think what causes. I do think that Karen Gillan is probably the weakest actor in this group. I mean, I don't think that she's bad. It's just it's just one of those things where, like, everybody shines so bright, someone's got to shine the dimmest. And I think that she has some of the least to do, but I really, really like the, the insight we get into her past and into Thanos as a dad. Um, I think I thought that stuff was really interesting and it was really important I think for both their characters and um, I think that you really kind of do feel for her I mean I don't love all of her acting in it yeah but I, I think, think that the character bringing that other yeah. element was really uh, beneficial for not just her but also Gamora's character yep you know, so I mean like do we want to just get the elephant out of the room a little bit early I know this isn't a perfect movie. I mean, there are. Mm -hmm. uh, I did have some issues with it. Uh, very few, but I. I think there are some that exist. Uh, I think with like maybe some of the plot structure. Um, yeah. Uh, there's. Ah, there's just some stuff in the screenplay that wasn't quite perfect, and there were some jokes that really didn't hit home. There's a mm -hmm. lot of humor though. There's a lot, a lot of, of humor. Lot of humor. Yeah. So I mean, it's rolling off a lot. I mean, even in Deadpool, which I think is one of the funniest movies, one of the funniest movies ever made, still had jokes that didn't land. There's, yeah, you know, you're always gonna have that. Yeah, and, and you gotta remember too, this is a movie that's being written for all. I'm a 27 mm -hmm. year old. This, I mean, they're they're rate they're making these movies for teenagers too. I, this is yeah. for everybody. So, you know, maybe not all the jokes landed for me, but maybe you know, someone in high school watching this movie, it would land, mm -hmm. or you know, even someone younger. So, yeah, you gotta I mean, take some of that into account. You know, I, I actually. <laughs> I already saw this one twice, guys, and I saw it with two different audiences, and, like, there was audiences um, that laughed really loud at certain things that the other audience didn't, yep. and, uh, you know, it's it, it's person to person, audience to audience, there's a lot of humor, not all of it's going to hit, but I think that definitely comes down to just yourself and your own sense of humor and everything, but I think everybody's going to find something really funny. I thought that this movie in general was probably funnier than the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I was laughing out loud a lot. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I, I, and like I so said, the audience I was with, people had to stop their <laughs> laughter because otherwise we wouldn't hear the next joke because people were laughing so hard and loud and together. Um, it was one of the most fun experiences in the theater, getting to see that with a packed house. Yeah. This, um, the energy that was just in yeah, that movie and, going, and in the crowd. Going into my energy, I, I brought my uh, brother and nephew, 10-year-old nephew, to IMAX. It's their, there was their first IMAX 3D experience, so <laughs> it, it, it was a blast. It's a great know? movie. Yeah, to, yeah. To, we had center seats, you know, like three rows back. It was just perfect seats in the house, <laughs> and it, it was fun. They both enjoyed themselves, and there was some really good uh, 3D effects, too, Yeah, uh, in it. Uh, sure. It's stuff. a visually stunning movie. Visually stunning movie. It, it was the use of color is insane in this movie, I think. Yeah, it's it's... It's just, there's nothing else out there that looks and feels like this movie. Uh, and I think that's just something really unique and something that's so original uh, with Guardians of the Galaxy. And I think that's really what elevates it uh, from a lot, of summer block, a lot of summer blockbuster movies. It's just, it's just so different. Mm. I think you definitely na hit the nail on the head as far as like what the issue is with it. And it's just that it's thin with its plot. I think there was a part like 75% of the way through the movie, or not probably like 60% of the way through the movie, I was like, okay, what is this about now? Like, you know, let's 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 get to the plot a little bit here. But I think that like I wasn't sitting there like wanting to hit the gas or anything like that because 
the characters are so great. It doesn't yeah. quite matter exactly what they're doing. You're having so much fun watching all these characters interact with each other. It doesn't necessarily have to have some extremely convoluted plot for you to enjoy it. I think that, like... Too many of these comic book movies have that, I and mean, there's a problem yeah. that the, the, I had with Civil War, there's problems I have with BBS, there's problems I have with so many of them where they try to Nolanize these plots, they try to inception everything so that it's, oh, well, this plot's super complicated, that means it's a really good movie, and it's like, no, just put great characters in any situation. You can put them all in a waiting room, and it doesn't matter if they're interesting, fun sure. characters that we love spending time with, it doesn't matter what's going on in the movie. There's tons of great movies where only a few things happen. Mm -hmm. that really actually happen in in a film. So I think that at the end of the day, yeah, there was a part of me that was questioning, okay, like, what's what's the next part of this plot? But at the same time, though, the characters were so fun and interesting and engaging, it, it didn't matter. It really didn't matter. Yeah, I really love Drax, getting Drax some more lines in this movie. And, yeah. like... Learn, uh, learn a little bit more with some of his past stuff. And his relationship with Mantis yeah, is Matt, yeah, it's so, so good. funny. So it's good. like one of the best parts of the movie, I think. Honestly, he's one of the best parts of the movie. I think yeah, Dave Bautista yeah. is like, like kind of showing himself that like he can go the route of uh, uh, Roddy Piper and, and The Rock and, yeah, and, and no, these totally. wrestlers that have gone out. And really, they have this charisma. They know how to act. They know how to work crowds. I mean, that's their job. You know, when, when they're a wrestler, yeah. you are an actor, and you have to have charisma, and then Dave Bautista has been showing that he really does have that in these in these right roles, and they, for so long, they just kind of gave him the big action dude kind of, like, roles where he doesn't say much, and you know what I mean? Like, this, uh, you know, like, man of, the, uh, man of the Iron Fist or whatever, you know, he doesn't oh, say yeah. anything no, and stuff anything. like that, you know? They just have him look big and scary, and I think that, like, with this, he showed that, like, he is legitimately one of the funniest people in the movie. yeah. Yeah, uh, going in. Let's just go through the characters. You know, with Ray. Mm -hmm. We were just talking before we uh, started rolling the camera. Uh, Rocket, Raccoon, and Bradley Cooper. Uh, Bradley Cooper is phenomenal voice actor in this. You, you. I barely can tell it's him. I don't, I don't even think yeah. that it's him. It's I just, don't even think about it. It, it. It's just crazy good. Crazy good. Yeah, he's I, just I, Rocket when that movie's going on. I don't think. Oh, look, Bradley Cooper's doing that fun voice. Like, I, I, it's like you almost forget about, like, that extra star power that this movie has. Yeah. Like, he's just sort of hidden in there. Uh, and I think that, yeah, his his voice acting is, is, is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Com like, he just disappears into that character. I don't sit it's, there and think about Bradley Cooper. In, my, in, on, in all honest opinion, I think it's some of the best voice acting I've heard. Mm. Just the character that he's, the, 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 way that, the way that he's choosing to do it, oh, just two thumbs up. Uh, but like another, and then like Baby Groot too. We should probably talk about Baby Groot a little bit. I think this is probably like the cutest character <laughs> in any movie. Yeah, I mean, that, like, not to get into the spoiler like, section already, but he's too adorable to kill. <laughs> I love they even acknowledge in the movie that he is just the most adorable thing in existence. Like, just they, look how cute he is. Just dance along the music. Oh, and I, the I, I yes. It's it, and they yeah, it's Groot. Cool. Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so cute, yeah. And, you know, and that might annoy people. Sure. I think some people, people, you know, it's like, they can't enjoy anything. They have to find a reason why it's, well, the, see, they're, they're trying to manipulate me into thinking it's cute. It's like, motherfucker, it's cute. <laughs> it's cute. You know it's cute. They know it's cute. It's fine if we all think it's cute. Okay? Like, sometimes business also needs pleasure. And sometimes it, it's... You need to just, like, turn off that part of your brain sometimes. That's just that's a little that's bit. It's cynical. Yeah, that's it's cynical. cynical. It's not critical. It's cynical. There is a difference, guys. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, he is just an adorable character. I love, though, it's a one-off. We're not getting it every movie. It's no, not like Tickle no. Me Elmo coming out every year. This is a one-time <laughs> movie where he gets to just be really adorable. Yeah. And uh, Change up the character a little bit. You get to... You it just, is a great movie. Well, I think it's awesome, too, because you get to see the team, how the team takes care of him. Yep. Um, and it's and important in the father, son, the family motif, it's important that they have the baby, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because this movie's all about families. It's it. It's, it's this their family drama unfolding, and you're just like, oh, no. hanging out with all your friends. Yep. So I thought that I thought they did a really good job with Baby Groot. I thought they utilized him well. I thought they, they did the fan service, uh, you know, at times. But overall, it clicked, worked, it was great. The biggest, for me, the biggest improvement, because all those characters I really did love in the first one. Obviously, Star-Lord. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I grew up loving Han Solo. Yes, I love Star-Lord. 
Uh, like obviously we just said about Rocket Raccoon, he's the way cooler version of Tony Stark. Drax, hilarious, hilarious character. Even from the first movie, he's so funny. And like uh, I know for a lot of people who uh, are developmentally disabled, like a huge hero for them. And I thought it was a great performance in in also kind of that respect. Uh, and then of course Groot is just kind of awesome in, in both movies. But the biggest improvement for me was Gamora. Yeah, hands down. Like um, she was probably my least favorite. To there's moments in this that uh, with her that are my favorite. Um, just so many little things and their relationship that they build with the rest of the characters, but also with her and Peter, really is great. I didn't feel their chemistry at all. Like I, I couldn't even imagine Zoe Saldana and Chris Pratt together at all. Where this movie, it really made sense to me about where this relationship is going. Like, I, you know, I mean, I do totally understand. Like, yeah, they're not supposed to be getting together in the first Guardians, but like. Like I said, I, I literally could not see those two people together. Like, I couldn't see them kissing or anything, like, together, giving each other more than a friendly handshake on either side. So, like, for me, the chemistry, the spark, whatever it was, it just wasn't really igniting in the first one or this one. I really felt it, yeah. and I felt I more for this character, like I said, and the things we found out about Nebula and watching her, like, go through some of this stuff with her sister and the rest of her family and now her new family... She was so much more interesting in this film, and like I said, one of my favorite parts of this one. So, guys, we want to get a little bit into the spoilers of this film, so if you guys have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, get out of here! <laughs> Skip to the end. We'll come back to you guys, but for now, we're going to talk about spoilers. Last chance to dance. Get the hell out of here for a minute. Spoiler talk. So... I, I really liked what they did with Yandu. And we mentioned Yandu's character and how important he is. Uh, you know, we find Mary Poppins, y'all! <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my... I went with my family on Saturday to watch it. And they're big Mary Poppins fans, as are my nephews. <laughs> that that reference was great for them. Is they he both cool? exploded is, at that. Is he cool? Hell yeah, he's, he's cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Poppins, y'all! Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, Yandu's character is really great, and it's such a satisfying arc. From even the first movie to this one, I think just the parallels about, you know, being a father and being a dad, you know what I mean? And being, all, like, someone all. who is, you know, an actually a biological father, but isn't there, and someone that actually is your dad. Yeah, yeah, in, in all honesty, his character arc in this movie, and, like, the, the, the capper to it, mm -hmm. you know, what and he ends up giving his life... Uh, to save uh, Star Lord Peter Quill, so that's probably one of the best uh, emotional moments, naturally emotional moments in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, and it's well, some it's of the highest stakes. Like, yep. I mean, uh, especially just the the way the scene happens, like just kind of the, the the visual the visual beauty in the scene, and like the emotional beauty in the scene, and then just you know the emotional weight of the character giving his life in that way. It's such an intimate moment between him and Peter Quill. It was... Oh, Chris Pratt plays it so well, too. Fantastic. Like, you feel like... You feel so much for Star-Lord in that yeah. moment. And, like, um... Yeah, it's... Him Him giving his life for Star-Lord is probably one of the biggest, highest-stakes moments in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, you know, everybody's been asking for the stakes to get raised. Well, there you go. They just raised you on... They raised you a Yondu. Uh, and honestly, like, after this movie, you're gonna realize that that hurts a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, like, uh, he, he was quietly one of my favorite parts of the first one. I would, like I said earlier in this review, I was so excited to see him join the team. Uh, his scene where he takes out it's all the mutineers the, the on his ship <laughs> is so cool. So I think it's cool. probably the best action scene in the movie. I, yeah. He kind of steals it's, the it's show with that. It's, it's so visually well, it's fun to so watch. It's so awesome. I mean, rocket scene in the woods is great too. Yeah, it's tough. I think though, my, my favorite little bit of action though, it has to be the arrow when it takes out that the light. light. Yep. <laughs> I knew exactly yep. where I was going. Yep. And then because it's so damn cool, it blows through everybody. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, it's the way that they visually make that look is so cool. I and I love too. Like it's so fucking awesome. Just like you know, they they they. They try to mutiny against him and take his ship. He's like, no, 
This is my ship. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to show you why I'm the fucking captain here. That's this one is my, my house. <laughs> that's, you're not taking it. It's such a cool, powerful yeah. moment for the character. That's one of my favorite Ultimate things that guys. happens in action movies. Like yeah. when a hero or, you know, an anti-hero or whatever is down, getting his ass kicked or whatever, and being, and then finally gets free and then yeah. just wipes everybody out. Just As, as soon as he gets that fit you're just like, on, ah, you're, just like, you're right there with him. Yeah. yeah, he's going to take out everybody. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. You're speaking of that scene, though, in a little bit, it's like I was surprised that this movie went for it as far as, like, it, uh, it's violence and like the uh, like some of the scary, frightening imagery. I mean, there's a scene where they're they're throwing like the Ravengers who oh, still it's... supported Yondu out into space, and you watch them suffocate and die and freeze. You're like, bye bye. Yeah, it's it's, it's, like it's the, pretty messed it's the up. Mocking them as they're dying. It's really that's, messed that's up. That's the part where I was like, whoa. They didn't even do that shit. Pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> you know, and that's actually about damn pirates. And yeah, so that's uh, that was I was I was really surprised by that. He slips robot prostitutes in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. however the ducks just hanging out with <laughs> some <laughs> robot prostitutes. You know, uh, just uh, like I said, I was really surprised with some of the more adult things that showed up in this Marvel movie. I mean, a Disney Marvel movie at that. Like yeah. there's hookers and 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 people are getting killed. And <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty intense. I think uh, I think something we should definitely touch here in the in the spoilers, you know, is the scene that turns Star Lord against his father. Yes. Um, I you know there's 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 the complaints because there's the scene where you you find out that he put the tumor in you know yeah. Peter Quill's mother's head, and as soon as he tells him that, he just starts shooting him, and it's like, you killed my mom, you know, it's kind of like the BVS and uh, the Civil War. I didn't but we were, but yeah. We were talking, yeah, no, but we were talking about, like, this is the argument against that. This this one's actually written better than both of those, because mm -hmm. it was put in the beginning of the first movie. I mean, this is, in, in Civil War, it's something they built towards, but they did, it was so, they weren't building it, building it. It yeah. was just kind of like, well, now it's here, so let's kind of add it into this story. Yeah, the first Iron Man doesn't go on and on about his dead parents. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. this, the first Guardians opens up with Peter losing his mother. Yeah. One of the biggest parts of the movie is, Peter, take my hand! And, you know, Peter, take my hand, he sees his mom. It's one of the biggest parts of the fucking first movie. Yeah. And this movie also opens with Meredith Quill. I mean, she is extremely important to the plot. And honestly, I did not even think about that. I was just like, yeah, fuck yeah, shoot him, Peter. I was just on board with Peter. And at the same time, I feel like Ego saying that it was, how was his ego getting the best of him. He felt that he had Peter under his control. And he's also completely out of touch with human beings. Yeah. Like, he doesn't understand... Like, like Which I really he, he says about, right before really that about, about Peter letting go of, like, those earthly connections. You know, what about my friends? He says it was in the trance. You know, what about my friends? He's like, we're past that now. And Peter goes, okay. So I think that in that moment, Ego thinks, okay, he's on the level. Yeah, he's, you know what I mean? He's under the trance. He's on the level. He's a celestial. He gets it that we, what we're doing is bigger. Mm -hmm. My life, my love, and my lady are the sea. And that he is on board. I think he just kind of lets it slip in kind of his hubris you know he just sort of lets that slip out because he's he's not even thinking of, mm -hmm. of that because he doesn't think about people like that you have to remember this man does not think about that so for him he doesn't even understand i think in that moment that that is something that could snap peter out of that trance and even if it did i mean or that why peter would even care that much i think <clears throat> Yeah, but I mean, even you find out too. Though. I mean, you search. I mean, what do you, what can Peter Quill do against him too? Yeah. You know? So I mean, that's that ego in him. Yeah. You know? It's just kind of like, well, whatever. I could just use him as a battery for the next mil. You know, thousand. Yeah, years. yeah. You know, wh whatever. You know? I really liked actually. Oh, sorry. I was really also surprised. You know, it's kind of also going on with the violence thing. Like, um, some of the things with ego were some straight up scary shit. Like he's like, you know, when his body's like coming back and shit. Yeah, I was like, like that could give a kid organs. nightmares. Yeah. Uh, and then too, the way he dies is fucked up. His his eyeballs turn to sand and like <laughs> fall into his head. Like it's <laughs> it's messed up stuff. <laughs> I'm I'm an adult and I was kind of traumatized. I was like, <clears throat> man, yeah, some dark stuff. Shit. <laughs> um, <sighs> but yeah, no. Uh, I'm just thinking of another other other spoilery talk. What's, what else is in there? Um, 
Well, Sylvester Stallone's cameo. Yeah, we can talk about that. some of these. Uh, some of I, these I can get my, uh, my, uh, my comic book nerd on and help <laughs> educate what happened in some of these uh, after credit sequences. So we see Sylvester Stallone early in the movie has some interaction with Yondu. And we find out that he's an old Ravager and he's Stakar. And Stakar O'Gord in the comics was Starhawk, or the leader of the original team of the Guardians of the Galaxy in the Guardians 3000 universe. So they are the original team. So when you see that team at the end of the film that's all together, you see this mainframe voiced by Miley Cyrus, Michelle Yeoh as, oh man, I'm blanking on his sister's name right now. I keep wanting to say Aisha, um, which we need to talk about them in a minute. Uh, so we have we have uh, his sister Michelle Yeoh who's there who has like uh, who has powers as well with him. Uh, there's Krugar who we see kind of throwing up some magic you know hand signs and stuff all Doctor Strange style. Uh, that's because in the comic books he's actually the person who secedes Doctor Strange as the Sorcerer Supreme. He's kind of like Doctor Strange's Beta Ray Bill. To Thor, <laughs> if you guys get what I'm talking about. So, uh, so again, that's kind of what to expect then from Kruger. You have Charlie 27, played by Ving Rhames, so I'm so excited to see. That guy does not look like a bitch at all. And he's, <laughs> he's basically kind of like their Hulk. Yeah. You know, and then you also Almost. have Martin X, who is kind of like made out of like a, like a crystal like substance. Um, so that the, that's who they are. They were the original team of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which Yondu was a part of. So I thought that was really cool how they interwove that into the lore uh, of the Guardians of the Galaxy film. It reminded me a lot of what they did, which I love so much, in Ant-Man, where they actually had that yeah. Hank Pym yeah. was the original yeah. Ant-Man, was one of the first superheroes in existence. Like, that made me so happy that the way they were able to put that into the lore and kind of, like, fix a little bit of, like, some of the things I think some of the comic purists maybe didn't like as much about the MCU in particular um, the, uh, one of the other ones that we saw, uh, was obviously with Aisha, which, what did you think of the, uh, the Sovereign? I, you know, I think, I agree with Dan Merle a little bit on it, that they maybe use them a little bit too much, use some of the joke a little bit too much, but I did like them. I, I thought they I were... I feel like they're just there for the after credit sequence. Like, we needed somebody to, like, produce, like, a massive army for us, or, like, some sort of thing for them to fight. Adam Warlock. Uh, well, I mean, like, throughout this yeah, movie, they know. needed the, the those drones to fight, yeah. you know? But they, I really feel like they were just there, particularly with yeah, they're them. Yeah, they're not the villain. They're not the villain. They're just kind of the annoyance yeah, that, like, yeah. keeps resurfacing that creates, ah, oh, Which I'm just like, kind of back fine again. with. I, I think yeah. they're kind of a bait and switch. I think they're supposed to be like, hey, they're the main bad guys of the movie, so you're looking at them. Yeah. So they can yeah. set up Ego a little bit easier, so you're not staring at Ego the whole time. Like, because, I mean, he's suspicious. I mean, guy's suspicious, a little, little suspicious. He's definitely a little suspicious. And uh, so I think that, like, having them there, I think a lot of people were thinking that that was going to be the yeah, main I, villain. I, yeah. You know, guys, you need to stop taking what trailers tell you as being gospel. They are not made by the director. The director doesn't sit down and go, okay, let's cut three minutes of this for the trailer. Like, no, another company does that. Like, how can we sell this movie to people who don't want to see it already? I mean, that's what a trailer is for, is to sell to people that don't want to see it already. So, I mean, that's where they appeal to multiple different audiences. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get butts in seats, okay? They're not going to tell you that there's a great one from this from this movie, the Gardens of the Galaxy thing. Like, that's not even the movie. <laughs> it's not, and it yeah. shouldn't or even need to be. But they'll do that. Like, they'll show you stuff that isn't the movie. They'll cut things together so it looks like interactions are different. Like, we're a family. Oh, well, except maybe her. It's like, that isn't in the movie. That's actually just totally cut up other stuff all put together to make it look like maybe he's kind of into Nebula in the trailer. But he's not. Uh, so I think that, yeah, people need to stop taking what trailers tell them to be like, well, the movie messed up because the trailer told me the Sovereign were the main bad guys. It's like, watch the movie. Don't, yeah, the trailer isn't the movie. Stop <laughs> doing that. It's silly. You're, you're hating movies for the wrong reasons, guys. Um, but yeah, I think that they really were there for the most part just to set up Adam Warlock, which, I mean, Adam Warlock's fucking cool. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome that we're getting him. Uh, but they were fun and funny. Uh, I don't think they really needed to have a big role. I wasn't disappointed that they weren't the main villain or anything. Because what we got was better. So yeah, we have we have that one. We see Adam Warlock being made in the pod. And it's a really cool little twist on the origin of Adam Warlock. He's extremely important in the Infinity Gauntlet arc. He's actually an extremely powerful hero. Actually capable of wielding the Infinity Gauntlet, which he has in the comics. So I think we're going to expect to Set see up him. For Infinity War. Yeah, he. This we know we're getting some Endgame stuff. And speaking of some Endgame stuff, that Stanley cameo, right? 
Now, <laughs> anybody that's well versed in the Marvel comics knows that that scene was huge. That scene was enormous. And it, what that is, is that he is meeting with the Watchers. And they are these like cosmic beings that watch. They don't interact, they don't interfere, they just watch. And uh, there's been a lot of fan theories that this yep, Stanley yes. cameo has been connected. <laughs> and this is the confirmation that it is. He is an agent of the Watchers, possibly a Watcher himself, who has been watching all of these things go on throughout these movies and possibly... The other Marvel affiliated movies that are over at Fox and Sony as well. So it, it's a, some fun connective tissue, yeah. but it also, like I said, it's a, it's a harbinger stuff. of the end to come for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, that was that was really exciting. It's probably it's the best cameo, mm -hmm. probably. I didn't like the the after credits scene there. I think that you could leave after. <laughs> You don't need to stay and see him like, hey, guys, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, yeah, they had the second. Yeah, yeah, I felt like that was, like, I mean, I think it was maybe a reminder to people maybe that didn't quite get, because it's such an offhand reference where they're kind of jumping through all these different, like, planets and dimensions. You see some other creatures and things that you've seen from the Marvel yeah. Universe, and they're kind of bouncing through all these places, and then they come across them. So I think maybe they just wanted to remind the audience, like, hey, don't forget that thing you saw. Yep. Because it's important. And yep. I think that's all it really was there for. Um, because we didn't, I don't feel like we really needed it. So we've definitely gone over a bunch of the things here that we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, the things we liked, some of the things maybe that didn't quite work for us. Um, so, John, what then is your kind of final summary and then grade for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? Well, you know, I loved the first Guardians of the Galaxy. I was going into this movie with extremely high expectations, and almost all those expectations were met for me. Uh, I think it's an extremely enjoyable, it just adds to the lore, adds to the story, builds up the characters, gives you more, gives you motivation, and then the story arc with Yandu and, uh, you know, uh, Ego and Peter Quill and just everything, all this stuff kind of culminating. It gets it got me it has me so excited for the next uh, you know Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. I thought the soundtrack was awesome in this movie. I, I really really liked uh, Mixtape Volume Two mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Uh, so I mean that that was awesome. And you know I do have a few issues with the movie. I feel like the tone just doesn't the tone doesn't always gel because the movie is really funny, but it also has some of the most um, some of the best emotional you know, things that happen in this movie. So I thought the tone just kind of was a little over the place, but I love this movie. I'm going to rewatch this movie a ton. I'm going to try and go see this movie again today. <laughs> <laughs> and when I leave here, I'm going to try. So, uh, yeah, I really, I really, really enjoy this movie. I uh, can't wait uh, to see more of The Guardians. <clears throat> I give this movie uh, A-. minus. Now, I'm extremely biased right now, because I'm going to say all those things that I said that I didn't quite like about this movie, and I'm going to throw them in the garbage and tell you how much. I love this movie. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think it's a really unique movie, yeah. and these are characters that I personally love. I mean, I've grown up as a fan of things like Cowboy Bebop, Outlaw Star, the Borderlands franchise. Obviously, a team of Han Solos is something that I personally <laughs> am going to love. And the characters, this movie, like you said, it builds on these characters in such great ways. It answers all the questions that I had from the first one. And then introduces maybe a couple more. And, and just gives us a great launching point for the future of these yeah. characters. And, and for the, the Marvel cosmic universe in general. Um, I, had a fun, I had a fun time both times seeing this movie. I think it's so funny. Uh, you know, Each time I caught even more and more jokes. I love its sense of humor. I love all the different things that it has to offer. It has action. It has love. It has humor. And I think that it's it's one of my favorite Marvel movies. And it's probably going to be one of the Marvel movies I rewatch yeah. the most. Um, I think it's a perfect companion to go along with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume uh, Volume 1. But <laughs> I don't know if we don't call it Volume 1. But it is now. Uh, I actually already own the soundtrack for uh, Volume 1. I even have it on I have it on CD because my car is of that kind of age and yes I have to use CDs guys you can make fun of me down in the comments um, I actually already uh, went ahead and I have 
my CD coming for volume two now. I have been listening to it obsessively. I think I've heard some people say they don't like this one as much. I think it's one that actually the, the songs are maybe not quite as well known and they will grow on you as time goes yeah. on. Uh, and you will fit them to these scenes for the rest of your life now. Um, it, it just fits in this movie uh, flawlessly, I think even better than the music in the first one. It's better for the film. Um, so overall, I'm going to give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 an A. I really, really liked this movie. I am biased, guys. You guys are going to like it differently. Maybe you'll give it a big blase. Whatever. Whatever you like about it. Hate it. Whatever. I love this movie. Uh, I love the Guardians, and I can't wait to see more of them, and I, I just love this Marvel property. I, I Yeah, I think I think the main thing, I'm just going, just coming out of this movie, this is just so original mm -hmm. and unique, and it stands out. It stands out amongst all the other movies that exist out mm -hmm. there. This movie, they, they stand out. And it's possibly the most visually stunning Marvel movie that's that's come out. Yeah. You know, it delivers, I think, on all cylinders. I don't think there's any way you're going to just have a, a bad time watching this movie unless you hate life and maybe, but um, <laughs> I hope you guys get a chance to go see this one this weekend. I know John is going to try to get to see it again here. Uh, I've already run out and watched it a couple times. So tell us what you think of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in the comments. You can uh, subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, leave us a like if you like this video. Um, you can also find us, guys, on Twitter at Back to Feature and on Facebook at Slash Back to Feature. I've been Giovanni Carlo. And I'm John Vandaloo. And we'll see you guys next time. What's that? He says, welcome to the frickin' Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Only he didn't use frickin'. Help! Look out! Oh, wow. I tried, guys. Yeah.